Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome to Unity Game Essentials series, where we're going to cover some of the basic elements that you need for every game that you make. And we're going to start off by taking a look at how to make a main menu screen for your games. So I've got this project started, which you can find down below the video to download for yourself to start off with, or you can just roll with your own project, it's not nothing too intense that we have in here. Just as something for us to have as a basis to start the, our little um, main menu that we're going to do. So I've got two scenes set up. One is, say, our main game scene, which is just a simple little scene that has a little ball that bounces up and down. And then we have a main menu se scene set up, which just has a cube in it to, that rotates it around, just so we can see that the game is running and things are happening. But that's basically all we have going on here. So what we want to do is create a main menu that will look interesting to our players. So to start off with, we can see in our default scene here, because we are loaded in a 3D Unity setup, we've got the environment in the background, the little kind of sky box that we have by default in Unity, which is fine, but doesn't really fit with a main menu kind of vibe that we have. So the first thing we'll do is go to our main camera and change it from sky box to solid color. So solid color, as you can see, turns everything that we can see to a nice solid blue color. But we're still left in our scene view with um, the, the traditional skybox because our scene view isn't being dictated by what our camera can see. So we'll just change the color of our background here. We'll just make it white. And we're going to move our camera in a bit closer to this little cube just so we can see it uh, a little bit more, filling up the screen and stuff like that. So we'll just move it in here. We've got our little camera looking at our box makes it a little bit more interesting so if i go ahead and hit play we can just see this little rotating cube nothing too exciting but a fairly kind of standardish little random main menu screen so we have our simple little background that we're going to have for our main menu let's fill in some content so we'll go ahead and we want to first of all let our players know what is the name of this game and to do that we need to have some uh, ui elements on the screen and all we have to do is go up to game objects at the top and then UI and text which will create a new little UI window within our world uh, which is kind of awkward to see when we're in this 3D view so if you're working in 3D what you want to do is hit 2D up here which will create our little UI window and if we zoom out and zoom out because our UI is created as a very big object within the world we see our little white box which dictates the UI and a little smaller box within it which is our text you can see it's appeared here on the left in the middle and then down here in our game view you can see oh there's our new text that we just created down there so i'm going to move this text uh into if i can just grab it there we go i'm going to move it into the middle of the screen and i'm just going to hold uh and click on it and then hold alt just to stretch it out nice and big and i'll actually just move it up as well a little bit to there and then what we'll do is align our text. So we'll go over, make sure we still have our text selected here. And we'll go over and set the alignment to in the middle horizontally and in the middle vertically. And then we'll jump up the size of our text here like this. And we'll change the name to just my game. Something simple, whatever you want to call your game. Um, but this doesn't really stand out from our background very much. If we've got this black text or kind of dark text, it's not necessarily black, it's kind of a dark grey. But it doesn't really stand out greatly from our little background here, especially if you have any different kind of colored objects and if we get any kind of shade coming behind this text, it kind of gets lost in the transition. So to make your titles stand out from your game, a common technique, very simply, is just we'll make this a nice little bright white, which of course, if we were to move this up now, it'll get lost in the color of our background a little bit. Um, so what we'll do is add to that a new component called an outline, like this. And as you can see, it creates this little black outline around the text. Now we want to make it a nice solid black, so we're going to increase the alpha value all the way up to the top, so it gets a little bit thicker. And we're going to set the distance of it, instead of one, to be two. So it creates a nice thick line around your little bit of title text. Okay, so we've got our little title screen text like that. Very straightforward and very simple. But of course, a lot of people would want to use an image instead of a text. Maybe you have a cool graphic graphic designed to show your game's name. 
you don't necessarily want to just use whatever font is built into Unity or maybe whatever font you're after importing into your game. Instead, you can use an image to show your game's name. So just as an example of that, I'm going to first of all deactivate our text that we already have. And then we're going to go to game object UI and add a new image. Now this shows up as just a white little box. That's fine. So all we have to do then is add whatever image we want to add into the sprite slot here. Now I've included with this project a simple little image. So I'm going to click and drag on that from the assets folder. I'm just going to click and drag that into our sprite slot and it creates this brand new game image here. Now if I go and zoom in on it, if you look down here in the bottom corner, you can see this is what the image should look like. Uh, it's obviously squashed down a little bit, but this is what it should look like. But if we look over here, we can see that this image here is squashed in from left to right a lot more than this one. And that's because by default, when we created that image, it created a square and then it tries to fit this image here into that square. So it'll squash it in tight. So we don't want that obviously. So what we'll do is we'll go to preserve aspect over here and hit the tick on that. And what that'll do is basically it'll try to preserve whatever the ratio of length to height of this object is within whatever bounds you set in here. So now if I grab our little anchors here and just zoom back out a little bit, if I just click and drag this, whatever way we move this around, you can see that little image will always try to adjust and make sure it fits in as best it possibly can into that box. So we'll just slide that into position in the middle there. We've got our title now that we can show our players. So the next thing we want to do is make some buttons that we can interact with. So we'll go again to our game objects, UI, and we're going to add a new button. You can see it adds in as a, a very small little thing. Oops, I trying to zoom this in a little bit. There we go, we'll move it down. We'll make this button a little bit bigger, like this. Again, we'll grab a corner and if we hold Alt, we're able to increase it all um, around the center point of the object. Now our button text in the middle is still very small. So if we open up the drop down here and highlight over text and we increase our font size, you can see it gets nice and big. And let's change the name that we have written here to new game and we'll change the name of the object in the hierarchy to new game as well just so we're able to keep track of what we're working with and then we're going to make a couple of changes to our button here first thing we're going to do is by default when you create a button in unity it'll create it using the default button texture uh, which has these kind of rounded corners and stuff now you can use that if you want to you can use your own images if you want to as well but another simple technique that actually works pretty well and fits in with the kind of current modern modern aesthetic for flat design is to go to the sprite and just delete it and then what we end up with is this kind of default kind of white square which can seem <clears throat> it can seem nice and simple and maybe like a little too basic but it actually fits in with a lot, a lot of kind of modern design aesthetics so if we highlight back over this again we'll also see if we go to run the game here with our cube rotating in the background, if we highlight over new game, it's very hard to tell, but when you hover over the button, it's making it go a little bit darker, which is a really good thing to do in general because it is gives the player some feedback so they know, oh, this thing that I'm hovering over, it's obviously interactable because it's reacting when I move over it. So it invites players to hover over it and then when they click on it, it goes darker again. But the problem with Unity's default buttons is when you hover over it, it's not really very much of a change in darkness level. It's, it's, unless you're really paying attention to it, it's really hard to see. So what we'll do is with our button selected, we'll go over to where we have here. We have normal color, we have highlight color and pressed color. So what we'll do is click on highlighted color and you can see it's a little bit below white, but not very much. So we'll drag this down a little bit. So it's a bit more obvious. And then on pressed color, we'll drag it down even more. So it's more obvious again too. So now if you press play, you can see when you hover over the button, it gets much darker and it's much more obvious that the player to the player, that, Hey, this is something that we can interact with. 
So now if I click on it, it goes even darker again, and it would obviously, we would want it to do something. Uh, but before we set it up to actually do anything, we're going to duplicate that button. So I'm going to right click on it and hit duplicate. You could also press Control and D. I'm going to rename this to, instead of new game, quit game, because these are our two kind of basic functions that you want to have in your games. And we'll click and drag this down so it's below the other button. And then we make sure we go to the text that is a child of the button and change that from new game to quick game. So there we go. We've got our two buttons and our title screen all kind of set up. So let's go ahead and make it so that we can actually do something with those buttons. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder that I've made and we're going to create a new C sharp script that we will call main menu. And then once it's open, we have our main menu script that we can use here. So to use the buttons that we've created back here, we're going to need two separate functions on our script. So we're going to need one to handle when we click the new game button and one when we click the quit game button. So let's first of all create them. So we'll create a public void new game and we'll hook the, this up in a minute so that our buttons will actually do what we want them to do. And then we'll have a public void quit game, like so. So we've got two functions that we want to do. So let's give them uh, the ability to actually do something. Now, the first one we'll do is on our quit game function, we're gonna take advantage of a built-in thing that's built into Unity, which is application dot quit. And that's all we do. Basically, that's built into Unity for a way for when an application is running, a game, whatever it is you make with, your, with Unity, uh, it'll just close out of that back to the desktop. Or if you're working on mobile, it'll close out of it back to your home screen. Um, it's a handy little function built in. So you don't need to worry about how, do I, how else do I need to close down, shut down my game and all this stuff. So then the other thing we need to do is our new game. And for a new game, basically all we would do is load in to the first scene that starts up our game, which is, if we go back in here and into our assets folder, if I switch back to level and make sure I save what I already have, this is our little bouncy ball scene. So what we want to do is, and as soon as our player clicks the button, we want to load into the level scene. Let's go back to our main menu. So of course, if we want to load into that level, we need to know the name of the level that we want to load to. So we go back in here. So the first thing we'll need up the top is a public string that we'll call new game scene. So this will be the name of the scene that we want to load when we go to new game. And to be able to load into a new scene, we need to make sure that we're using the scene management tools built into Unity. So if we go up to the very top up here, we need to add to the list of these usings here. We need to say using Unity Engine dot scene management. And the reason this isn't built in, well it is built into Unity obviously, but the reason it's not included by default is not every script needs to be able to access this stuff. So there's no need for every script to automatically be able to use it. So they took it out so that only when you actually want to load a scene, you need to add in this little line at the top. So with that line added in, we can go into our new game function and hit scene manager dot load scene. And we'll call this new game scene. So that's our new game scene string that we created up here. So basically what we're saying is use the scene manager to load the scene that is goes by the name whatever string value we've put in up here. So we hit our semicolons at the end and then we can hit save and go back in to Unity. So we'll let that compile for a second and with that done, we'll go to our canvas here and I'm gonna add our script that we just created into here. So I'm gonna go to my scripts folder. I'm gonna click and drag my main menu script. Then we need to type in the name of the new game scene. Go back to our assets. We need to make sure that we spell it the exact same and capitalize it the exact same or else it won't find the correct scene. So we need to make sure that in here we type L, capital L, and then the rest of level, uh, like so. 
So that's all fine and dandy, but of course our buttons don't magically know how to call our functions, so we need to set up what they actually should do. So if we expand our canvas again, I'll go back to our first button, which is our new game button, and then down here in the button component, where we have on click. On click is basically what will happen whenever the player clicks on the button. What we'll do is hit the plus sign to add a new action, and in this little slot here, we need to drag in the object that has our main menu script attached to it, which is our canvas here. So I'm going to drag that into there. And then under no function, basically we need to check, we need to find the function that we want to do. So we know that it's in the main menu script and then new game. So that's our new game function. And then for our quick game, we'll do the exact same thing. Drag our object into there, go to main menu and then quick game. So we'll just save this now and I'm going to hit run and there will be one little error that will pop up. Um, first of all, well, there'll be two, there'll, there'll be one error and one thing that won't work, which is if we hit quit game, nothing will happen because obviously when you're working in the editor, um, you can't just quit out of the game. It would, would that close out the whole editor? Um, you could make a case that maybe it would make sense to make that stop the the game running but that just causes lots of other little problems too so in essence basically the quick game um function that we created although it doesn't function for us right now it does if you build this as an actual game it will quit out of the game um the other function we have of course is our new game so if i click new game now you see an error at the bottom our scene level couldn't be loaded because be it has not been added to the build settings. So what we need to do is make sure whenever you want to load into a scene in Unity, you need to make sure that if you go to file and then build settings, that the scene you want to load is included in this list here. So we need to make sure that we load, put our main menu in there and our level that we want to load. And now if we try and run again, we'll see we click new game here we go it'll pop over to little bouncy ball scene that's bouncing away like a crazy little thing but there you go that's how we can have our main menu going in the game so this is the first part of our unity game essential series and in the next one we'll take a look at how to add a pause menu into your game